Okay. Then, uh, what we want to discuss next is uh, is this one. So, uh, what does MATLAB's stiff audio solver actually do internally? So remember, when we just call OD23S, we just gave him the function for computing F. But we discussed on Monday that in order for you to solve using a implicit solver, what else do you need? Yeah. You need also the matrix. You also need the matrix of D F D U, right? You have to actually solve the linear system again and again to actually even evaluate a single time step. Okay? To investigate what MATLAB actually does, here's an interesting thing. So, uh, what we can do is that for this two dimensional system, we can actually print out what you it computes okay and to see what MATLAB actually does and uh, uh, to do this we also need uh, to actually set some options so the first thing we'll do is we have the options equal to OD set the first thing we'll do is set the tolerance to really big so that MATLAB actually never refines okay so for example, we set the absolute tolerance to 10 to the 8, for example, so that we will always meet the tolerance. Let's also set the relative tolerance to 10 to the 8. Okay. Yes? Oh, what the tolerance does exactly? Uh, that's a good question. So the tolerance is... When when MATLAB solves a uh, solves a particular equation, it always so in all of these OD solvers, it can use more than one scheme, right? And when you use multiple schemes, you can compare the result of different schemes. So if all of these different schemes agree with each other up to a certain tolerance, MATLAB thinks that the time step I'm using is good enough, okay? And uh, if the different schemes give you different results, then uh, and uh, the how different they are is uh, the difference is larger than the tolerance, then it tries to refine. So what we're doing here is basically setting a large enough tolerance to tell MATLAB never refine the time step. Okay, and then we can use, for example, OD113 to compute it uh, uh, for two time steps, so from zero to one and one to two. And uh, let's see. So what we saw was that uh, actually it computed uh, for a lot more than I thought. Mm. Well, so that's an explicit time integration. I think it's actually using yeah one one three. It's a uh, it's it's using multiple schemes, uh, and you can see like uh, MATLAB actually is evaluating a lot of these functions at pretty much the same uh, the same U, right, for these different schemes. But one thing interesting is that if you use an implicit solver like 23S, you're going to see that MATLAB is going to evaluate uh, these, let's format long, MATLAB is going to evaluate uh, the, the function at slightly different U's. Right, so one at three five, one three four, three two, and uh, uh, basically, basically you are looking at small perturbations on these. Wait, oh, I didn't set the option. Sorry, if I set the option, uh, I think it'll be doing a lot. Uh, did I did I do the option thing? Uh, yeah, okay. Right, so basically uh, what MATLAB is doing is it takes very large time steps without refining at all, right? And uh, if you use an implicit solver, you're going to see that uh, MATLAB is constantly perturbing these U's for small quantities. So even if the baseline U is the same, uh, it's, it's being perturbed uh, uh, a lot. 
So, so what MATLAB is doing internally is it's, uh, it's using numerical differentiation. So partial f, partial u, which you need to solve a stiff system, can be approximated by, uh, in its definition is defined as in the two-dimensional system, partial f1, partial u1, partial f1, partial u2, partial f2, partial u1, and partial f2, partial u2, right? And it can be approximated by taking a value of f, f1, evaluated at uh, u1, u2, minus f1 at u1 plus epsilon and u2, divided by epsilon. So this is an approximation to the first value, and etc. So each one is going to be a difference divided by epsilon. So that's how you compute this internally in MATLAB. And so this is this is all good for this two by two system, but what if you have a very large system? What if you have a a million by a million system? Do you see a problem in this approach? So what's what's the problem if you compute the matrix partial f partial u if you have a million dimensional? Yeah, the computation cost becomes a problem. The computation cost is going to be proportional to the square of the dimension of the system. 